Hi everyone! In today's video I will show you how I use oil paints, wet into wet, also known as alla prima, to paint a beautiful ballerina. The plan I will follow here is called the selective start. I'll explain how this works as I paint. Welcome to my channel, Shelly J. Cox. On my channel I will show you my creative process, talk about art, and show you how I turn my art into fashion. So be sure to subscribe and then hit that bell icon if you want to be notified when a new video is ready. Okay, selective start. What is it? Well, it's a way of starting a painting that is to the point. The palette has been pre-mixed before starting to paint. The colors put into one of three categories on the palette, the lights, the middles, and the darks. In my last video, I showed you how I prepared this oil painting palette. See the link above if you missed it. Next, you look at your subject and decide where you want to start painting. In this video, I selected the mouth to start with. So I see the mouth is going to need some of the reds from my mid-value pile, with highlights from the lights. When you look at your subject, see it as shapes of color, like a puzzle. Now paint each shape in the correct color, with the correct value, and put it in the correct spot. Each brush stroke touches the one before it. With selective start, you don't jump around the painting. Instead, you keep building outward, one stroke at a time. Once I get an area down, like the lower part of her face, I will go back over the area if I need to correct a feature or if something just doesn't look right. The idea is to complete an area to its fullest. You don't want to rework an area too much or you risk killing the beautiful brush strokes that you've already laid down. I try to think about each brush stroke standing on its own as a thing of beauty. It's about mark making. Marks that when viewed together make a beautiful painting. I find that making my best brush strokes come when I work on an oil prime surface that is smooth. I'm always experimenting with different surfaces. I really like wood panels that have been oil primed, but surfaces are a personal preference. Here I'm using a canvas that I bought that was already gesso primed. I sanded it lightly, then covered the entire canvas with oil primer. Let it dry, sanded it again lightly, and gave it another coat. It's a long process since drying time is a few days between coats, so I'll usually do a few canvases at one time. There are also some really good oil primed canvas boards you can get to practice on. I use the Centurion Deluxe Oil Primed Linen Boards. You can find them online. And I just want to say that I'm no expert, I'm just someone who really loves to paint. I love learning about painting, I'm always reading about art, going to workshops when possible, and just constantly in awe of all the amazing artists that I see here on YouTube. It's my hope that if I keep practicing every day, that I will become the best artist that I can be. And I hope my channel will inspire others to be creative along the way. Okay, back to my painting. It's fine to start on a toned canvas if you want to. I just really like how my skin tones play off of the white canvas. I feel like I have a little more control over the colors of the flesh this way. Here I'm putting in the shadow of the right arm. It's helping me to see the shape of the nose and lips. This is going to be where one of my hard edges is, while the chin is getting lost into the upper shoulder. This lost edge happens since the two areas are of the same value. I'm going to refine the nose and lower face before I move on. This area should be finished completely before I build out any further. And remember to let each brush stroke stand. I don't do any blending but I do come back with another loaded brush stroke and sometimes I'll place it on top of the last one, partially overlapping them. So not really blending, but more like sculpting. Building the form, brush stroke by brush stroke. I keep working the lips. I just feel like something's off. I'll keep making changes until I love what I see. Remember to be the master of your painting.
All right, time to get some of that dress going. This will be another point for me to compare the parts that I've already put into place. Once this element is done, I will take a good long look at what I've painted so far and make any changes necessary. There's beautiful gold highlights along the strap. I want to be sure to capture those right now. Remember, I'm going for full details in each area right off the bat. These are going to be some of the lightest parts of the painting. See, there's a spotlight from above the stage hitting the bodice of her costume. So that gold really must sing. And in this part of the bodice, since it's so close to the red, will reflect some of that red, making a beautiful orangey red reflection. Man, I love that color. Okay, some of the neck is getting painted now. It's getting a little light on the right side, then it turns into shadow towards the left. Remember to paint in the transition from light to shadow with actual color. Don't just blend the colors together. There is some golds and reds reflecting into the shadow along her dress and just past the darkest part of the reflection along her neck. I'm gonna wanna be sure to get that into the painting. Continue building out, still connecting each brush stroke to another. As I move along the gold bodice, I paint in the first brush stroke with a general mid-value color. Then I go back over the top with the gold highlights and some of the darker bits. Here my puzzle pieces are quite tiny, but no matter, each one is still important to making the form look believable. It's kind of nice being able to focus on one small area of the full composition. I trust the process. I believe that once all my complete areas are done, it will look like my subject. This allows me to really think only about my marks, making those really great brush strokes. Time to move into the upper face. Placing the eye is going to give me another hard anchor point to compare the rest of the painting to. Once they're both in place, I'm going to step back and really look at my painting. This is a good time to ask myself the six painting questions that I use to check my work with. First question, are my values painted correctly? It helps when you have other values to compare around your painting. Second question, do any of my areas need to be more red, yellow, or blue? In other words, are the colors in my painting looking correct? Is it looking like my subject? Third question, is the painting too high in chroma? Is it too colorful? My paintings tend to lean in this direction, so this is a question I have to ask myself often. Fourth question, how are my transitions? Did I use warmer colors as I move towards my darks, my shadows? This is another question I need to ask myself often. Fifth question, how are my edges looking? Are there a variety of them? Or are they all too hard? Or maybe too soft? And the sixth question, is my drawing correct? As I go through the list, I will stop and make the corrections before moving on. I don't want to keep building on incorrect information. 
I keep a written list of these six questions pinned to the wall where I paint so I can easily be reminded of them. I know if something is wrong in my painting, one of these questions will definitely fix the problem. Okay, getting into the shadow side of the neck so I have a nice dark area to play the ear off of. There are some mid-value flesh tones in the left shoulder and lots of red reflecting into this spot. Painting into the ear now. Ears are kind of thin. Light will penetrate through a bit. It makes it look like the ear is glowing where the light shines through. The skin is thin, so the blood in the ear makes it look red. I want to make sure to capture some good color here. It helps me to just forget that I'm painting an ear. Instead, I want to see just shapes of color and paint those. A fun thing to try is to get a picture of an item, like an ear. Then turn the reference picture upside down and paint it. Once you're finished, turn your painting right side up and you should see your object, perfectly captured. I like to remind myself that I'm not painting things. I'm painting light. Okay, that's enough of me talking. Let's just watch as I paint.
Hi, I'm back. So please let me know in the comments below what videos you'd like to see from me. Should I talk in them? Or do you prefer just to listen to music while you watch me paint? I'd really appreciate any feedback you have for me. And if you liked the video, please hit that thumbs up button. Thanks so much for watching. And if you want to see how the painting comes out, be sure to watch for part two.